first off, I want to say if you're taking the time to watch the video, thank you. Um, I wanted to make a video for my Burbit crew that we're doing that we're doing this year. Um, we got a couple guys who've never done it, so I wanted to make a video talking about tips and some of the lures I like to use uh, when fishing for the burbot so they can kind of have an idea of what to expect and like the basics of uh, fishing for the burbot. So I'll go over the stuff that I know, like basic basic stuff for the burbot, lures I like to use, and then um, my favorite lure I like to use is actually a spoon that I paint myself. So um, at, towards the end of the video I will go over that um, if any of you guys want to try it I've really liked it it's pretty much like the main lure I use when I go out there so um, so yeah when fishing for the burbot um, rocky structures is where you want to fish probably like 10 to 50 feet um, anywhere in that gap you want to drill a bunch of holes um, they do school up a little bit they move in groupings so if you find one get your lure back down you can you can usually snag a couple and like I said have a bunch of holes move around if you're not getting you know bites try another spot space it out a little bit um, you can avoid other groups you kinda wanna have an area more to yourself um, their main food source up at the gorge is gonna be the crawdads and uh, the kokanee eggs so uh, areas where the sun hits the lake first uh, and the uh, the water's a little bit warmer in those areas under the ice um, where the crawfish and everything move in where the water's a little bit warmer the fish will follow the food source so uh, I usually like to try to target those areas um, and then uh, glow if you're fishing for burbot the most important thing is uh, to have a lure that glows and to make sure you keep it charged uh, every 15-20 minutes uh, pull it up if you haven't been getting any bites hit it with your ultraviolet light your UV light um, it'll give it a, a more powerful charge than just an LED light or a regular flashlight UV light um, makes it makes a pretty big difference um, they don't have great eyesight so glow is the key and um, so whatever you use make sure it glows you're gonna throw a piece of chub or sucker meat on it and then I also like to do the uh, smelly jelly crawfish I'll put that on um, there, that has UV beads in it as well so it, that helps it go a little bit gets the main food source sent down there along with the uh, the sucker meat so um, get the smell down there keep it charged and uh, if you're not getting anything try moving around a little bit um, and that's that's basically it jigging dead stick give them different presentations um, but yeah if you're not getting any bites you, you kinda wanna move around um, so going into the lures that I like to use um, tube jigs uh, grub tail uh, and then the spoons um, those are mainly the ones I like to use I got couple that I've used up there before I've got pink white blue uh, the mr. twister and this is the the spoon I told you about that I paint myself that I really like um, I, I I typically like these three better I don't really like going to the uh, the pink or the blues I don't feel like that they glow as much as a matter of fact I'll show you really quick the difference between them So you want to hit them with your light and there's a spoon I like, there's a big um, big tube jig, that's your, uh, that one was the pink, there's your white, there's your blue, and then there's the Mr. Twister. Um, the, the spoon, I'll, I'll tell you the, the paint I use and everything, that, that holds a charge really good, lasts real, really long, and it's heavy, it gets down there real quick, so if you get in them, you can drop your bait back down it's got the treble hook I just I really like using the spoon so that's why I'm gonna go over um, how, how I do that at the end <clears throat> um, 
like I said, you're just going to want to throw a chunk of sucker meat on there. You don't want to do a piece so big that it's going to affect your hook set inch by inch squares. And um, I mean, that, that's really it. The craw, like the crawfish scent. I'll go into the spoon now. Um, I, I like to throw the smelly jelly on the back. Like I said, it's got the UV beads. Um, so it adds glow to the back. Uh, you saw that the uh, the paint glows really good. Um, so that's that's my favorite one to use. Then I like the Mr. Twisters, um, the tube jigs. I, I I like using like the pink and the blues. Like if I'm out chasing like Lakers during the day, but um, most of the time I'll find myself just using the spoons. So when it comes to the spoons, all I do is I just I just get a basic cheap um, spoon. You can pick whatever size you want. I try not to. I usually don't like to go too big. Um, you know the burbot when they hit it, they inhale the whole thing. So I like to keep it a little bit smaller. So when they when they take it, I know they they get. I can get a good hook set on it and don't have to worry about big hooks or um, them taking you know the spoon getting in the way or anything um, so on a paint this is the brand I use um, it's a really thick paint I this is an old bottle I actually had to um, add some uh, nail polish remover just to kind of thin it up um, I've already done one here tonight and um, yeah so I will I'll paint one and just kind of show you guys how I do it real quick. Okay, so I got my spoon. Like I said, I just go with a cheap spoon. If I want to put a better hook on later, um, you can always change out your hooks. Um, all I do is I just take a Q-tip, cut the end off. Like I said, this stuff is pretty thick. So, get that out of the jar. And I don't worry about being super precise or artistic with it too much I just glob it on and then I can always clean it up and take a red uh, a razor and clean up the edges later on but just get a thick coat and I usually do two coats of, uh, of this glow paint when I do it just so I know that it's got a nice nice thick thick coat so it glows really good my jar is almost empty. I've painted a lot of spoons with this jar, so I'm running pretty low. And I, you can just get this at Sports Spoons. I think it's like five or six bucks a, a bottle, and I think I've painted like ten spoons with it. But like I said, you don't have to be super uh, super careful when painting it. Like I said, you just take a razor later and clean up the edges and. This is this is what I've always had the best luck on. Um, you know, we've done um, the Yamamoto's, um, and we've infused them with a, a glow powder, and we've 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 done a lot of stuff for the uh, the burbot up there. But this has kind of always been my favorite. I and the fun thing about using the uh, the spoons after you paint them is it kind of adds. Uh, I don't know, it adds a little bit like when you, when you catch them, you know, that you painted your own spoon and kind of put your own touch on the bait that's, you know, being effective. So this is kind of what I've just always used um, after my first year in the Burbit Bash. It's, it's, it's my favorite one to do. And I've gotten my brother-in-law in on the spoons and we usually do pretty decent on them. So when you, uh, when you get into the school of the bird, you want to get your lure dropped down quick. You can pull a couple of, out of each group if you can just reel your fish up, charge it, drop it back down the hole, and uh, pluck a couple out of the group. So that's really all I do. I just cover it. Um, like I said, it's not super pretty right now, but um, this is another one that I'm working on right there. 
Uh, I usually do two coats, so that one's just drying, waiting for the next coat. But once you clean it up, they actually look pretty good. And um, like I said, any size you want to do works pretty good. But um, yeah, I'm no professional when it comes to the burbit or anything. Um, I have a blast when we when we do the bash. It's 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 my favorite ice fishing tournament. Um, if you've never done it, I recommend it. You know, they want to get the species out of there, and it's just, it, it's a different experience. It's so much fun uh, doing the bash. It's, I look forward to it every year. Um, or even if you can't do the bash, getting up there and going for the burbot, they taste excellent. They're, they're a fun fish to target. It's just, it's a different kind of fish, and it's a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, like I said, make sure you got your glow. Um, don't put too much uh, too much sucker meat or anything on you don't want to miss your hook set the smelly jelly and the crawfish scent and uh, make sure you have your UVs charge them up every 15 20 minutes and um, move around I mean that, that's really it if go to your rocky structures and I mean it's it, it's a blast I, 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 I love fishing for the burbot so I hope watching this video you learned something um, if you get up there for the bash, good luck, or if you're just going for fun, have a blast because it's awesome. So thanks for watching, and I hope you guys took something away from it. Thank you.